Yeah, thank you so much for uh, joining for this presentation. Um, yeah, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna show uh, quite, a sh quite a short actually presentation, I hope it will be short, on how to use, how I use the Fortran in practice, uh, how I used it uh, for my part of my PhD work uh, that was in, in hydrometallurgy. Um, and what I found actually quite useful about Fortran and why I chose Fortran in the first place and uh, what was what actually is going on there. Right, um, just a quick introduction. Um, currently as a um, postdoc at uh, Mintec. Uh, Mintec is uh, South African uh, Science Council. So I'm from South Africa. Uh, and uh, Mintec is tasked to conduct the research to support uh, mineral processing industry, starting from the mine, mine planning, uh, mineralogical assessments, uh, mineral beneficiation, and, and the metallurgical section. Um, you can look at some of the interesting stats. It's quite uh, had, have quite a uh, long history and so on. Um, and uh, it does both research and consulting work. Uh, so it has this kind of two components and it's focused on the application of the research. I'm currently with the pyrometallurgical division, um, you know, after dissolving everything with the hydrometallurgy, I decided that now I need to start burning things. Uh, and that seemed to be more exciting. Right. So, um, so for practical application of creating some models that can be used by the engineers on the plant, um, First of all, well, they need the models. Okay, we need models for planning. We need models for uh, control, uh, for assessment of the situation. Uh, if something goes wrong, we need to figure out um, what we can do about it. So we want models, but there are a few limitations. Okay, limitation number one is that it needs to run on a normal desktop computer. Okay, so all the unfortunately all the uh, high performance computing and that's that's all out. Okay, it also needs to run under Windows. The plant engineers, they don't know nothing about uh, Linux or Mac OS or anything. It needs to run under Windows. And finally, the way the engineers are going to communicate with any kind of model is going to be through a spreadsheet application, most commonly Excel. So that, these are your limitations that you have to work with. And what I'm gonna show is why Fortran is actually fits quite well into that realm, despite the fact that you know you might be using it in the HPC uh, kind of environment. Now, just a little quick introduction: what was actually all this model is about? Uh, so, what it models is uh, the process that's called heap leaching. Um, basically, now this is a picture. Let me just see if I can get a nice. No, oh, why doesn't give me? Oh, here we go. Uh, little pointer. Okay, so you see here that's uh, what's called a heap. Basically, what you do is you crush the ore and you stockpile it uh, on a specially prepared pad. Uh, and you see uh, there that's uh, some lining that's going on there. Um, <clears throat> and then you pour some solution through it, most commonly acid, and it dissolve what you want to dissolve. Uh, and then you send it to down processing. So that's the schematic of the whole process. Um, there are some reasons why you want to do it rather than some other processing techniques. Uh, they all have to do with economics. Okay. Uh, the dimensions of those heaps are quite high. You can look at like what in the picture here is quite small. It's probably about six meters, uh, but you get the ones that goes up to 30 meters and they can be a few kilometers um, in uh, horizontal dimensions. So the operations are, are really, very really large. Um, so my research was looking at the hydrology of those heaps and how the solution actually spreads through the heaps. Uh, the structure there is quite complex uh, because you have uh, all particles that ranges in size quite dramatically. Uh, there is liquid that sits between them, but it's not saturated. So there's also some air pockets. In fact, for some processes, you in fact even blow air from the bottom. Um, the practical approach to look at that is to kind of smear all those different uh, phases uh, and say that they all occupy the same space, but in uh, um, sort of a different fraction of that space. Um, and effectively what you formulate, um, it's somewhat reduced order model uh, that's called Richard's equation. Uh, that's written on the screen. Even though it's called Richard's, it's funny enough, um, it should have been called Richardson. If the first time it's appeared was in a famous Richardson book on, uh, on climate modeling and weather modeling. 
um, but that's well find application in, uh, in the hydrology sector. So what you're tracking is the water content, how it changes with time, and uh, this term uh, gives you the flux, uh, and the flux is driven by the capillary pressure, that's your suction head and the gravity, um, and K is the uh, hydraulic conductivity that you know has parts in that that, uh, that depends on the uh, degree of saturation. Um, Okay, and, and the head itself is also depends on the degree of saturation. And uh, those relations are generally given. So what you have is a PDE, it's a scalar PDE, so not, not too fancy, uh, but it has some very nonlinear components here. So those functions here, KR and H are extremely nonlinear. So when you start solving this equation, you need to be actually very, very careful. They can change, especially suction head can change quite dramatically. Um, well, as an um, uh, engineer, of course, I was discretizing the space uh, using finite volumes. Um, that's much easier to track all the mass balances that way compared to finite elements. Um, now, now I'm going to come to the point why I chose Fortran. Um, and what I'm going to show is that actually it was the easiest choice, really. Uh, so that's not already talking about it, that I looked at space discretization. The domain that I'm looking at is very simple. Um, it's just a rectangular, so nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, I didn't want to use any big frameworks because uh, it's, they're just way too complicated and they, they exist for much more complex problems. Um, then also I'm lazy, so I discretize the space. I didn't want to discretize time and uh, solve uh, equations directly. So I thought, okay, what, what can I use to solve the OD? And that's where in fact everything came, came uh, about about Fortran. Um, because at the time, now we're talking about uh, it was about five years ago, um, uh, what, what exactly was available? Now, MATLAB was not available to me. We don't have a license. We didn't have a license for it. Um, there were, uh, for C or C++, you can try to use CVOD, but I told you Windows, uh, and trying to make it work and compile on Windows, that was a bloody hell. And uh, here I came across LSODA. Now this is a Fortran 77 code, very old, but all it has is it's really just three files. And all you need to do is just drop in into your project and call one function out of it. And the function is wonderfully um, documented. It shows you how you call it, uh, what exactly you need to pass and gives you examples of how you do it. And even though it's old, but it just simply works. And it, as I said, it was just as simple as dropping those three files into the project and you don't need to worry about anything else. Um, and finally, what to do with Excel? Well, there are a few ways how you can deal with that and how to make Excel to drive uh, your model. You can either compile uh, the, the model as a program and then just run it through Excel. It's a little bit tricky to track from Excel if your program is still running. Um, I chose a different way. I compiled my program as a DLL and um, uh, call that DLL from Excel. One other wonderful thing is that in Visual Basic for application within Excel has exactly the same memory layout for arrays as Fortran does. It's a column major. So I can just pass that array directly into Fortran and uh, not worry about how to marshal the data, anything like that. So that, that was great. Um, quick summary of what I found very useful uh, in terms of the Fortran, um, new Fortran features that, uh, that were really useful in this work. Um, well, of course, C binding. So that's to compile it as a proper DLL and to make uh, Visual Basic to talk to it. Uh, modules, as because the putting the quite a big, it's quite a big model actually to put it uh, and, and, and kind of manage it. So uh, modules were very helpful. Uh, bits of object-oriented programming also help because there are different uh, constituent models that I wanted to use and I wanted to test them out. Um, with OP, it was quite simple to, uh, to test them out and not to make huge changes into the code. Uh, one other interesting, one interesting feature which uh, came about, um, I think it's only Fortran 2008 that actually allowed it, is passing internal function as arguments. Um, that allows to capture the local um, uh, local parameters of the outside of the function inside the internal function. Uh, something that is very uh, common in, um, well, starting from Lisp, I guess, uh, and uh, common in many other languages, including Julia, uh, but not so much in uh, like a lower level languages. So now, as far as I understand, as far as I remember, for example, in Pascal, you can't do that. Uh, you also, in Arda, I think there were also some restrictions there as well. 
Um, dynamic memory allocation, of course. Now, sadly, no core arrays. As I said, that program needed to be run on uh, the simple desktop computer. So yeah, no core arrays. Uh, in, in that setting, so nothing uh, nothing fancy. I tried to introduce some open MP parallelization, but in fact, it did not improve the performance. It could be to do with how uh, El Soda also implements things. As I said, it's quite old. It never was developed uh, with parallelization in mind. Um, so that might inhibit the performance a little bit, uh, but I'm gonna go and do a little demo now. Uh, let me just stop the presentation and go there. Um, now, can I just get the confirmation that you can see the spreadsheet? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's the spreadsheet. That's the interface to the model where you can put quite a lot of parameters. Now, using Excel as an interface is actually a wonderful thing because the number of parameters that we have to deal with uh, in engineering settings, I mean, what I have here is about 30, but that's very little actually. In the full-blown models, you look at a couple of hundreds. Uh, and uh, managing all of that uh, through the spreadsheet, that's, uh, that's the best thing that you can actually do. Um, now, you put the those parameters in here. That's not, not going to go too deeply in what exactly they represent and whatnot, but I'm going to show you just how the model runs. So you just click the button run. It takes about five seconds on this laptop. This is just a normal office laptop, um, quite old, in fact. Um, and just to give you an idea, it still has it still has a CD drive, and it doesn't have HDMI cable, for example. Okay, so the model finished running. Uh, half of the time that it actually runs, it actually takes for Excel to recalculate everything once the data gets gets loaded in the spreadsheet, and you go to results, and that's we're gonna start seeing here. So what do we have here? This is the dark blue color. This is the domain, uh, and slightly to the right of the center, there is a drip emitter. Uh, that introduces liquid. The domain starts quite dry. And, uh, oh yes, and the packing here is there's two different packing materials on the left and the right. And you can see now how the different saturations start developing. So on the left, it's the material which has many more fine particles. It sucks the liquid much more uh, than the one on the right. And that's what you can see as the time progresses. Yeah, that goes in there. Yeah, so that's the little uh, little demo. And let me go back to my presentation. Okay. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. And can answer some questions. Thank you very much for this nice presentation of how to wire up a F77 code to, to Excel. <laughs> Um, one quick thing just to add to this. Uh, so I compiled it uh, now when I recompiled it with Intel Fortran. So Intel Fortran is a little bit stricter uh, in type checking and El Soda directly doesn't compile with it. So you have to unch uncheck thing there. There's a um, parameter that says um, uh, don't check function interfaces. Uh, just because uh, the way El Soda does is it requires some work arrays uh, where it puts the data and it basically writes uh, real values into uh, integer array and uh, that's not allowed in a, in a strict sense. But it still works. Well, this, this, this is also something you might encounter with GCC 10, I guess. Uh, with the G Fortran, uh, as far as I remember, when I compiled it last, last time, it actually worked uh, worked fine. It, I think G Fortran for Fortran 77 code that allows it to be a little bit sloppier. Ah, okay. Yeah. So it's um, so there are some questions. Um, uh, Aryan has one. Uh, yes, <laughs> but this is a bit of a side uh, question. Um, you you talked about uh, the, uh, the the chemical uh, things, but um, it, it's something that interests me from a different point of view. Uh, I work in um, environmental problem problem solving, um, and sometimes we have to deal with uh, um, a contaminant extraction things. So this looks a bit um, like uh, the leaching problems we have in that uh, respect. But yeah, absolutely. It's it's, 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 very, it's yeah, it's very very similar indeed. Yeah. Um, you probably would, if you look at the leaching problem there, that on the top of that. Uh, so you where am I going back to? 
use it. This this reaches the question. So that gives you the uh, the liquid flow, and then on top of it, you you probably add um, uh, the pollutant spread within the within the liquid uh, within the liquid flow. Precisely. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting problem actually, and then it arises in many contexts. Uh, in fact, it for heat bleaching context, it was borrowed from soil science, and in soil science, it's actually borrowed it from um, from oil industry. Okay, I wasn't aware of that, but I knew the right. Richards uh, equation from uh, from soil science. Yeah, yeah. In oil, I think uh, the one thing uh, they most of the time what they do is that so Richards equation is already simplification. It tracks only one liquid. Uh, in oil, they track two liquids, uh, and then there are two coupled equations that you need to solve. So it's a little bit more um, more complex context there. But yeah, it's the, the principles are the same. Yes, well, the Richardson, Richardson equation is also used for the unsaturated zone. So you have um, uh, air as well as uh, soil and, uh, and moisture. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one short question, maybe. So uh, I noticed that when you were, were when it was calculating, Excel was uh, freezing or basically it doesn't react to any events. Is that, is that still the case with Excel that when you kind of like call into, into a uh, com object or how it's called nowadays that it's kind of like still freezes? So to call into what? So when you call into the library from Excel? Yes, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, reacting it, to, to clicks, right? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does freeze, yeah. So ooh, let's go. Back to that. Well, uh, I don't know if you can see at the bottom here. It tells you the its state. So when I rerun it, uh, yeah, it freezes at, uh, for this moment. It takes about five seconds for the model to run. Um, ah, it takes a little bit longer now. Ah, okay, but now it's still frozen. But you see that it says calculate. So okay. now that's the half of the time it actually takes for uh, for Excel to recalculate. Uh, what happens in the, what happens in this table, and to get to uh, to that plot, yeah. But unfortunately, it does freeze uh, because I don't know how exactly it's organized there, but it seems to be sit, everything sits on the one thread uh, yeah, exactly. within Excel. Yeah. The other thing about if you do it, uh, hook it up via DLL. Uh, be careful that if your program crashes, uh, it will crash Excel with it. Yeah, everything. I remember, yeah. I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately, again, the way Excel works, it actually will crash every single spreadsheet that you have open. That I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, so that's just be prepared to that, uh, yeah. Uh, I had it in another context where there was an old program uh, that when it detected nuns, uh, it had instruction stop. Uh, so I had to remove that stop so that it doesn't actually crash the whole Excel with that. <laughs>